the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. And the brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us not call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contract of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up in your church, we pray, O Lord, the spirit that fills St. Joseph as he laid down his life for his sheep, so that through his intercession we too may be strengthened by the same spirit and not be afraid to lay down our lives for others. Through Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, you must say what is consistent with sound doctrine, namely, that older men should be temperate, dignified, self-controlled, sound in faith, love, and endurance. Similarly, older women should be reverent in their behavior, not slanderers, not addicted to drink, teaching what's good so that they may train younger women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, chaste, good homemakers under the control of their husbands so that the word of God may not be discredited. Urge the younger men, similarly, to control themselves, showing yourself as a model of good deeds in every respect, with integrity in your teaching, dignity and sound speech that cannot be criticized, so that the opponent will be put to shame without anything had to say about me or about us. For the grace of God has appeared, serving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires, and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age, as we await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of the great God and of our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people at his, as his own, eager to do what's good. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Trust in the Lord and do good that you may dwell in the land and fed in security. Take delight in the Lord, and he will grant you your heart's request. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. The Lord watches over the lives of the wholehearted. Their inheritance lasts forever. By the Lord are the steps of a man made firm, and he approves his way. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Turn from Turn from evil and do good, that you may abide forever. The just shall possess the land and dwell in it forever. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Please rise. Alleluia, alleluia. Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and will come to him. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. <laughs> Jesus said to his apostles, Who among you would say to your servant who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, Come here immediately and take your place at table? Would you not rather say to him, Prepare something for me to eat? Put on your apron and wait on me while I eat and drink. You may eat and drink, when I am finished. Is he grateful to that servant because he did not he did what was command, commanded? 
So should it be with you, when you have done all you have been commanded, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done what we were obliged to do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise There are many, or there were many, like social categories um, during the time of Christ that many people of our contemporary society would find difficult to accept, like um, servanthood. It was something real during the time of Christ, during the medieval times, and, you know, I hope not in our contemporary world, but it was something real, servanthood. And the same thing with um, kingship. You know, um, many people today would rather get rid of that image of the king. Why? Because we are, we are more uh, in a society um, very particular with democracy, with freedom, with liberty, with equality, and all of that. And so sometimes it's difficult to understand uh, all these social concepts. But let's try to um, understand them in the context of a Christian life. What is Christian servanthood? Can I say, well, servanthood, we're all the same, we're all equal, no one is a servant. Okay, well, yes, we are all equal uh, before uh, the eyes of God. But just the same, let us take a look at what exactly the Lord today is saying, you know, what it means to be a Christian servant. What is Christian servanthood? How how should we understand that in our contemporary world? You know, setting aside those old uh, notions of being servants in the ancient times and in the medieval times, when servants were really servants. The context is this, you know, the Pharisees and the scribes and, and many people during the time of Christ believe that God can be kind of susceptible to bribes, that we can bribe God. By what? By the things that we do, by the good things that we do. Like, okay, if I, if I keep coming to church every day, and if I keep praying, and I am asking God something, well, hey, God, you owe me. You know, I, I come to church every day, you know, I pray my rosary, I pray my divina, I give to charity, I, you know, you owe me. And that was precisely what many Pharisees and scribes thought and believed. That by doing something good, God owes them back. Now, what Christ was saying is, well, it doesn't work that way with God. And I think it's something that Christ also again wanted his, his followers to understand. We can never make God feel that he owes us any ounce of debt of gratitude. God doesn't owe us anything. You know, one, one of the prayers, you know, the, the prefaces in the Mass, it says, you have no need about praise, yet your thanksgiving is itself a gift. Our prayers and thanksgiving adds nothing to your greatness, but profits us for salvation. In other words, what, what the prayer is saying, you know, in Mass is, God, we know you don't need our praise, you don't need our thanksgiving, you don't need our prayers, because it will never add anything to your greatness. You know, as I have said many times, you know, God's being God does not depend on us. He will not be affected by, by our attitude towards him. Whether we love him or not, whether we believe in him or not, whether we pray to him or not, whether we praise him or not, his being God will never be affected. He remains God. On the contrary, our being us depends on God. If we do not pray, if we do not praise, if we do not love God, it will greatly affect us. And so that when, the, you know, the, when the prayer says, it really our prayer and thanksgiving adds nothing to your greatness, but it profits us for salvation. In other words, when we do something for God, we are not doing it for Him. When we pray, we are not doing it for Him. When we praise Him, we do not do it for Him. It is for us. 
because it profits us for salvation. And so the way um, the Lord um, in the gospel today was reminding his disciples, what is Christian servanthood? It's not that feeling that, you know, why am I doing this for God? Why would God need my service for him? It's not God who needs it. It's us. And so the things we do for God, you know, when we pray, when we come to church, when we give alms, we're not doing it to him because he doesn't need it. We are doing it for us because those things profit us for salvation. So to, so to end, two things as, you know, as we reflect on Christian servanthood. In Christian servanthood, there are two things I would like to emphasize. Humility of Christian servanthood. The example that Christ used was the Last Supper, the washing of the feet. Christ said, see, you consider me as your teacher, as your master, as your Lord. But I did not come to be served, but to serve. In other words, when we talk about doing good things for others, you know, it's not a matter of, you know, who is who should be serving. Like, you know, I, I am of higher status. I am of, you know, I am more influential. I am more educated than I have to be served. All the others, well, you can line up at the buffet table. But, you know, I'm sitting down here. You know, all the servants should come to me and offer me everything. Uh, Christian servanthood is not about that desire to be served. Rather, it's about always looking for opportunities to serve others. And 24 hours a day, there are always many opportunities. Again, we're not even we're not talking about the difficulty of the things that we do for others, or the greatness, or you know how expensive we do things for others. There are just simple opportunities of being able to serve, not being conscious of who we are, what we have, our social status, our you know um, economic status, and all of that. It's just about just looking for any opportunity to serve others. Was greatness, service for God, it doesn't add anything to God, but it profits us for salvation. The second thing, humility of service. The second is joy of Christian servanthood. And I think it is, it is important because um, we could be doing things, good things for others, and at the same time, um, not always happy. I mean, it's not, it's, we know it's difficult loving others we know it's difficult caring for others um it's it's a fact of life it's a fact of life uh because we are sometimes we are not even happy doing good things for us for our own selves um it is always very challenging because uh, as human beings our patience are not limitless you know our um, strength human strength are not limitless but i think today um the lord is challenging all of us you know it's it's one thing to be humble in serving others, but it's also another thing to be joyful in, in serving others. And that's um, the two big challenges when it comes to uh, Christian servanthood. Uh, because in the end, um, when we face God, um, it's not really about, again, uh, as the Pharisees would always say, Lord, as I face you, th these are the lists of all the things I did. Now you owe me. You know, uh, when we face God, it's not, you know, finally the, the moment of truth when we say, Lord, now pay me back. You know, it's really facing God and say, Lord, I was your, I tried to be a good and faithful servant. You know, I did good and I hope everything has profited me for salvation. And I hope when we face God that we'll say, you have been a good and faithful servant. Welcome to your eternal reward in heaven. We trust in God's loving will. Let us not make our requests known to Him. We pray for leaders of the church. May the grace of our Almighty God pour forth in them a spirit of unity and truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray for all who are elected to government. May God's justice be in their hearts as they make decisions in the best interests of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray for all who feel despair. May God lift up the cloud of darkness and fill them with hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray for this faith community. 
We will be good soil that bears good fruits after hearing the word of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who have died. May they enjoy eternal life in heaven and behold the face of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And today we pray in a very special way for George and Dolores Donovan, anniversary remembrance for Margaret Yonke. And um, we continue to pray for all poor souls in purgatory this month of November. May God in his greatness and mercy welcome them to their eternal reward in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our and for all of us gathered here today, for ourselves, for those who ask for prayers, so we promise to pray for. As always, we pray for those who are ill, uh, those who ask for our prayers, especially those who are in great physical and emotional and spiritual pain because of their illness. We pray for that miracle of healing for them. And our loved ones, those who ask for our prayers, are going through challenging times in their lives. We pray for them also in a very special way today. And also for everyone celebrating this Eucharist with us all over the world, um, we pray with you and for you in our Mass today as well. And for all the intentions that we hold here in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Almighty Father, in your wisdom, grant our prayers according to your holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us our bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of divine work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God Let us now pray that my sacrifice and yours be made acceptable to God Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands. The praise and glory of the Lord. Father, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. Most merciful God, pour out your blessing upon these offerings and confirm us in the faith that Saint Joseph had professed by the shedding of his blood through Christ our oh Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, a duty in our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you as we enjoy, we proclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son in your eyes, blessed is he who comes to the name of the Lord. O Son in your eyes. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the true fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. <clears throat> In 
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one with the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring it to the fullest of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Joseph, and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we merit to be co-heirs of eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form the divine teachings, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from the evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. May this heavenly table, Lord, bestow on us a spirit of fortitude and peace, so that following St. Joseph's example, we may willingly spend our lives working for the honor and unity of the church through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. The Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, love, and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us now. Be a the of the we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, the power of God, cast into hell, Satan, all the evil spirits, call upon the Lord, seeking the room of souls. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to that protection, in God of hell, who sought the intercession, was left in the Inspire us confidence and we find by thee, O Virgin of Virgins and Mother, to thee to be found before thee be stand, sinful and sorrowful, who mother the Lord and kind Lord, despise our petitions, but in your mercy, we have answered them. Amen. Our Lady of Lords, Saint Joseph, a beautiful day. Beautiful.